What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Seat Radio. My name is Corbin. I'm about to head out to Winter Weekend here in a couple of minutes. I hope to see you all there. But before I do head out, I wanted to make this video because one, I feel bad it got lost in sort of the translation here with everything that's been going on with the Red Sox lately. This topic sort of got kicked down the road a little bit. And two, because it's an important topic to talk about, especially for us as fans who religiously watch the Red Sox day in and day out. The people on our screen, the people commenting and announcing each game are extremely important to our viewing experience and for the Red Sox and Nesson I'm gonna call it the Red Sox in this video just because it's a little bit easier and they're owned by the same group they announced that they're gonna have some really big changes coming to their booth in 2023 so what we're gonna do today is talk about those changes what I think about those changes I want you guys to let me know what you think about those changes and we're gonna talk about how this may affect the 2023 viewing experience but before we get into that do me a favor make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already if you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Helps these videos out a ton, and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. So like the intro said, there were some huge changes that happened this offseason to the Nesson booth. A lot of them are about additions, there are some subtractions as well, and the booth may look completely different come 2023. So what we're going to do is we're going to break down all of those changes, what we like about them, what we don't like about them, and talk about them together. And we're going to start with the subtractions from the Nesson booth. And there's really only one big one to talk about, and that is the fact that Tony Maz will not be returning to the Nesson booth in the future here. He announced on his show on 98.5 the sports hub a couple of weeks ago that he will not be returning as an announcer for the 2023 season now i know a lot of you guys are going to be super pumped about this there was a lot of hatred towards tony maz this season in the booth i personally didn't really love tony in the booth but i didn't hate him as much as some of you guys have i think at the end of the day tony you could tell really loved baseball and really loved the red Sox, and i actually did grow to kind of enjoy his stories about when he was a beat writer talking about guys who were on this team 15 20 years ago ago when he was just a beat writer for the Red Sox so I didn't hate Tony Maz as much as a lot of you guys did but at the end of the day I think it's a smart decision for this Red Sox team one of the biggest things about the Nesson booth that I always loved as a kid and growing into an adult was the fact that the Red Sox had some of the best color commentary in all of baseball and a lot of that had to do with the fact that it was because you had guys who a had already played in Major League Baseball Jerry Remy Dennis Eckersley Jim Rice Tim Wakefield all of these guys who manned the booth at one point or another were guys who had been on the team and some of them who had been on the team so well that they were in the hall of fame so that was always a big thing for me is that player perspective and tony just simply could not bring that to the table which not really his fault it's just something that you know it, it, it's it is what it is right there and i think that had a lot to do with what the red sox were trying to do going forward with the nesson booth if you take a look at all the additions that we're going to get into in a second almost every single one of them is a former player of the boston red sox the other thing too with Tony that I was kind of missing when we were listening to him in the booth was he didn't have a lot of banter back and forth with the uh, current play-by-play -play guy and that's not always his fault he did try and Dave O'Brien just seemed to absolutely ignore him sometimes you could tell that there wasn't a ton of chemistry and a ton of back and forth that you get with other announcers with Tony Maz in the booth so I kind of feel bad that Tony won't be back you tell he really loved that job I know a lot of you guys will be happy so let me know what you think of Tony Maz not being in the booth in 2020 23 down below now let's talk about some additions to this red sox nest and booth and how it is going to affect the 2023 season the biggest addition here is the fact that kevin euclid is going to become the primary color commentator it was announced a couple of weeks ago that he will be the one who has the majority of calls he will have about 80 games during the season that he is the color commentator for the boston red sox and personally i absolutely love this one because kevin euclid was one of my favorite players growing up I once got sent home from Little League because I refused to learn any other stance than Kevin Euclid's. He was a guy that I always looked up to. So having him in the booth for me personally is something really, really exciting. But as a general statement, I think he actually did a really great job in the Nesson booth for 2022. He was a little bit rough around the edges at the beginning of spring training, especially going into the regular season. You could tell he was nervous. He didn't want to say something inappropriate. He didn't want to do the wrong thing in the booth. And it was sort of like he was walking on eggshells like he was just trying to go through the motions and get 
comfortable in the booth at the beginning of the year but as time went on he got more and more comfortable and it led to a lot of great moments in otherwise dim 2022 season you had the rally headband which at one point became a staple in red sox nation they were posting it everywhere you with the rally headband on was a movement for a while we were doing it on our live streams and then towards the end of the year something that i really really loved about you is that when the team was going bad he always found a way to make it just a little bit easier to watch the game especially in that september that late august August time where we were very clearly out of it and we were playing players that really you know weren't gonna have an impact on the future of the Red Sox so it was nice to see Kevin Euclid doing something to entertain us the what I'm talking about here is remember that like two week span where for every like sixth seventh inning the Red Sox were already down by like three runs they couldn't score anyone Kevin Euclid and Mike Monaco or Dave O'Brien TC would bring them up something to eat right it was like donuts nachos there was popcorn at one point there were some more nachos hot dogs hamburgers Burgers, and Kevin Euclid would just eat and tell stories for the last couple of innings of the game and it made things a lot easier to listen to so I'm pretty excited to see what Kevin Euclid does as he grows within the primary role of color commentator for this Red Sox team and I think he could be a really great great commentator for this Red Sox team I just think he needs to polish it up a little bit but those natural sort of segments and bits and stuff like that is something we have not had with this Red Sox team in this color commentator role for a little bit now now, especially with the absence of Jerry Remy RIP and now the absence of Dennis Eckersley so all in all I'm super excited that they decide to go with Kevin Euclid as a primary color commentator now what happens to the other guys who were in the booth well Kevin Millar is still going to be there he's still going to do about 10 20 games is what I saw and that's not a bad thing at all either I liked Kevin Millar in the booth in 2022 I just thought he talked a lot and he never really shut up and it was hard to like actually pay attention to the game with Kevin Millar in the booth but I loved his stories man and he is such a big part of the history of the Boston Red Sox so to have him in that booth have him talking about baseball and talking about his stories with Nesson is always a fantastic thing and he's going to be back in 2023 so I'm excited to see what he can do in the booth as well there were some more announcements about new guys who are going to be added to this rotating roster of color commentators in the Nesson booth in 2023 the big one in my opinion is that Tim Wakefield is going to take on more uh, games in the booth he did only a couple last year it always seemed like and he always kind of said that he didn't love the idea of being in the booth but I guess something changed he is going to be in the booth a little bit for 2023 so keep an eye out on that uh, obviously he's been doing the Nesson pre and post game show for a while now so I don't know how different of a transition that is into in-game commentary but Tim Wakefield's one of the biggest characters in Red Sox nation he's been doing TV for a long time I think he'll have a pretty smooth transition into being a color commentator on the these Nesson broadcasts. I'm not at all upset about this decision. I'm I'm very excited to see what Wakey can do in the Nesson booth. And finally, Will Middlebrooks is going to take on more games in the Nesson booth in 2023. And this one I'm super excited for. I actually think he did a fantastic job in the two games that he did at the end of the season. And one thing I love about Will Middlebrooks is that he was never the best player on the Red Sox team. And he's going to bring that perspective to the booth, right? The guy who had to to work how to really dive into analytics who had to really prepare mentally and physically for every single game is going to be a fantastic perspective in this booth and another thing that i love about will middlebrooks is the fact that he's going to bring in new age analytics into the nesson booth i love dennis eckersley i love jerry remy but those guys didn't really dive into what these new analytics are telling you why they're important to today's game and M will middlebrooks can do that and i think that's going to be a fresh new perspective as to what this next in booth in 2023 and the future beyond that is going to look like so will middlebrooks and kevin euclid are the two that i'm most excited for but overall i really like the changes going into 2023 i think giving kevin euclid the majority of the games was the right call i think bringing on middlebrooks wakefield millar are going to be a ton of fun throughout the entire season and again i don't hate the dropping tony mass i don't love it either so let me know in the comment section down below what do you think of all this what do you think of all these changes do you like them do you not like them and which broadcaster are you excited for the most about going into the 2023 season? Let me know all your thoughts on this down below. As always, if you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Helps these videos out a ton and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. And I will see you hopefully at winter weekend if you're there and in the red seat.